Hey everybody, Nicholas St. Clair, AIFD, here at Shinoda Design Center in Santa Ana, and we are going to teach you how to do an entryway piece that is this really cool frosted story. Going to get you through, again, a multi-seasonal arrangement, most of holidays, Christmassy, little wintry, but um, a lot of frosted iciness going on. We have these beautiful fails here that are just absolutely incredible. We've got three, three long laterals to each one of these, and they got some really nice stem length on them, so we're going to need some height with these. We have some other really pretty ferns that are all flocked and iced out, which are really pretty. Uh, looks like a cedar here, nice and glittery, lots of laterals. Looks like a boxwood. Again, same thing, so you can kind of see the theme here. Icy, frosty, cold. Beautiful, glittery, I'm not sure what this is to be honest with you. Another type of fern, give us some height. We got some of these. Uh, glittered out birch branches, which I have already started to use, which I'll show you how to do what I did with that in a second here. And we have these beautiful frosted succulents. A little bit of ice going on those. And so you can see this isn't going to be your traditional holiday. Uh, this is more of a winter themed arrangement. So again, it's not specific, but you could totally Christmasize this or whatever you want to do with it to make it really super holiday. So we're going to take all these beautiful frosted items here and we're going to create a really cool open entryway piece. A lot of height. Not really wide. Not everybody has a really wide, you know, entryway. They have a smaller table or a sideboard that you can add this onto. So it's really cool. So I've taken this beautiful square piece that we've gotten here, got some texture to the outside of it. I've already put in the dry Sahara foam, which is great for using with uh, permanent botanicals, as it grips on really nicely to the stems of the uh, flowers. So I've taken the birch branches and I've kind of broken them down. You can see there's a lot of laterals within this. So I've taken some of these shorter ones off and I moved them around and I have just glued them and propped them into the middle. And this is actually to give us a nice armature section to put in the Phalaenopsis orchids to cascade back down over the arrangement. So you can see we're supporting everything, but it's all decorative, which is really cool. So it's again, pulling the silver, the glitter, all the way up, giving you a lot of nice height and drama, but still being able to see through it, which is nice. So it's not gonna be super heavy. So we're gonna take these here, some shears, cut off some of the shorter pieces because you are gonna wanna pull in your birch branches towards the bottom as well. everything out of the way because we are going to use the pan glue today and that can make a mess over your stuff so you don't want to have you know these lovely little ribbons of glue across all of your flowers so you always move what you're working on closest to the glue pan and move everything else out of the way because you don't want to mess it's not fun trying to pick off that spider web of glue once you start this project i'm actually going to break this down a little bit farther so we can get some more movement within this arrangement as well so now that we've got all of our pieces here we're just going to add some of these taller ones in here as well you're going to see how I'm doing this. So again, just take the pan glue, get some nice connections on it. We're going to go straight into the arrangement. Pretty vertical. I do have a little bit of a fan shape. When I actually start to design this, I do use the corners of my bases. I just think it looks more interesting, more inviting on a table versus having that blunt sided arrangement. So I always tend to design on a corner when it comes to a large square like this. Again, it just makes another angle, another movement. It gives you some more places to, uh, farther space, actually to place more stuff so it kind of spills out over the front of the base, which is really nice. And I'm gonna save the rest of this for the end. So once we get all of our stuff in here, we can see where we wanna add maybe like a heavier little cluster of branches coming out shorter, or maybe up to the other side. We'll see how it goes at the end. So first things first, I'm actually gonna start at the top with the orchids. And I've actually already cut off about, oh, five inches or so off of one of the stems, because I wanna kind of stagger these within the arrangement. So I'm gonna start with the higher of the two, and we're gonna kind of drop this down in through the arrangement, catch a couple of these branches with the orchids so it all stays really nicely within the armature that I've created here. A Little bit of glue on the bottom. Now it's in here, we're gonna go back in, we're gonna move these around. I'm just gonna catch a couple of these in different branches. And you can move these so you can drop them higher. And this is the one that I've cut a little bit shorter. So we're gonna kind of come towards the front of the arrangement a little bit more to give it a little bit more of a depth from the front. But we're gonna match these stems up so you're only seeing the one stem in the middle, not the two. Yeah, we'll do And these orchids have a really nice lifelike texture to them. They have a really soft touch to them. They don't look like the traditional um, silk flowers, which is really nice. They're more of a waxy finish, which kind of is how Phalaenopsis orchids feel anyways. 
again, you can play with this at the end too. You're gonna see how, to, how all this comes together. You have this really nice waterfall cascade effect, which is really gonna bring your eyes all the way down to the base of this arrangement. We're gonna do more of a vegetative design to where it's not gonna be onesies, twosies. We're gonna do clusters to like actual plants are planted in the bottom of the arrangement, which is gonna be really pretty at the end. So taking the fern here, we're just gonna, you know, and again, animate everything. So make sure that you bend your leaves so they're not just straight out. You wanna have some movement. If it's real, it's not gonna be a straight stem. You can see now how it looks more realistic. We're gonna take this. This is gonna be the front of the arrangement here that we're working on, so you're looking at the side of it currently. When you're inserting, make sure you just get into the right level that you want, because once that glue hardens and you try to move it around, it's not gonna happen. So kind of gauge with your eyes about what length you wanna be at, because once that glue goes, you're in. <laughs> so now I've got this really pretty, kind of a heavier visual focal point down here at the other side. I'm gonna take these light, lighter area pieces. We're gonna add these into the back a little bit, just to give you some more height and some more dimension as we come around the corner as well. I'm not putting in just one, I'm doing multiple. So I've got three of them here. and I'm gonna kind of cluster them together to really give it a really nice look, like the actual plant is growing out of the corner here. And visually just kind of meshing the flowers together in the different plants, because when they're growing in the garden, they're not all gonna stay separated. They are gonna start to kind of mesh in with each other. But don't be afraid of your neighbor. Then you can see how we have this kind of a heavier focal point. It cascades all the way down. It just catches your eye. It's a continuous loop of going back and forth. Okay, so we're going to take this piece here and we're actually going to break it down. It's got a lot of laterals on it. So we're going to take our wire cutters and we're going to cut near the base. Cut all of these little lovely laterals off. So instead of having just one plant to put in, now we've got five little inserts that we can kind of cluster lower to give you more of an interesting look and actually a little bit heavier of a look as well. So a nice little amount of glue. Move your product from the front because you don't want to get on it. Pretty little bunch of that there. These are a little bit longer, so I'm actually gonna go towards the middle with these. I'm gonna drape one over the front. We have another one as well. I'm gonna do the same thing. Go as low as you can to make sure you have as long of a stem length as possible. Actually, the leaves are movable on these, so if you want to bunch them up at the top like a little glumette. You kind of see I'm kind of growing through the arrangement. It's not all just in one little corner. I'm actually moving it through the arrangement. So I have two of the same type of succulent, and I have one different type. So this is going to be a 360 arrangement. Somebody has a round table or a table that's visible from all sides. You want to be able to make sure everything's pretty. So I'm actually going to take two of these and do these together. I'm going to take the other one and put it in the back so we can create another little focal point towards the back side. It's just in the event that somebody does see it from the other side. But again, we are going to have a heavier focal point in the front. Make sure you have lots of contact with the phone. Same thing on the back side. You can kind of see where we're going with this, the back side as well. Now we're gonna come back in and fill it with the other foliages and different textures to really soften this up and add some really cool interest to these. We're gonna take this one. This will be too long of a stem for me. I know that already. So we're gonna cut it off, leave the little nubs on the bottom. I'm just gonna kind of pull these out over here off the side, just add a texture. And now you can see we're kind of elongating it out to one side. Again, animate everything. Everything is pliable. I'm gonna leave this one a little bit longer. I'm gonna pull this one around the back and kind of go into the branches a little bit just to soften the lines. So now we're down to our last bit of looks like a cedar here and we are going to take these again lots of laterals on this we're going to cut these apart again get more mileage out of these when you break them down so it just depends on what you're using for if you're doing like planters and you want to just have a large plume of this in one section glue the end of it and stick it in and it's gonna be great but for this case we want to be able to spread this out a little bit make this still look airy while adding some different textures. So these lower pieces up here in the front. I'm gonna spit this around, we're gonna do the same thing on the back. And careful with the glue. As you can see, I am going in, I'm spinning it around, and I'm holding it upside down again because I don't want the spider web of the glue to go back across anything, to drip on anything. So I'm always spinning it and moving it to make sure that it's staying on itself. So 
So now we've got all of that inserted. You can see we've got some nice depth here. We've got the orchids coming over and sheltering the little area below it. We also have kind of meandering through the arrangement, creating more of a texture through it. And what we're gonna do is it also brings your eye back up to the top. We've got these long laterals over here. So it just kind of circles your eye all the way through the arrangement as you're looking at it. But we did keep some birch branches for the very end. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna decide where we wanna put these in here, maybe to bring our eye back in, maybe put a stopping point so we kind of focus on something. So now we're gonna play with these and see where we wanna go. So naturally, we already kind of have this little area right here. I think that's gonna be a great area to really add some more drama with these birch branches. It's gonna really make you focus on the focal point that we have going on right here in the front of the arrangement as well. So you can leave it like this which is great to go on an entry table. It's got a great winter feel to it. Again, this will get you through the entire winter season. If you wanted to add, you know, ribbon for the holidays, who doesn't love diamonds? So we have this beautiful ribbon here. Again, it's a wire. And we're not gonna do a ribbon per se on this. We are going to just do some loops to tuck into this, just to give a little bit of a glittery shimmer. So I'm just gonna take the ribbon, give us a loop, take some wires, and this is just a 24 gauge, nothing too strong for this purpose. Cut these in half, and I'm just gonna catch both sides of the ribbon. Hold it in as tight as you can. It's a thick ribbon, the jewels are really thick on this, so you're not gonna get too tight of a loop on this. And I'm not gonna glue this. This is just something that you can insert in if you have a holiday party coming up, because you don't wanna ruin this ribbon, because I'm not gonna break this off into small sections. I'm actually gonna do one continuous run throughout the arrangement. Again, that way you can reuse it for something else down the road. So just find that foam, give it a good stick into the foam, the same thing the rest of this ribbon is. Okay. You can see just how a little bit of ribbon running through, especially with this sparkly ribbon like this, it really just pizzazzes it up. Again, just manipulate everything through the arrangement how you want it. Now you've got some glitz and glamour going on in your arrangement that will still be winter theme, but now it's got some glitz going on, which is awesome. So this will, again, another trans-seasonal, so you can change out the ribbon. I didn't glue that in. That's just an add-on with some wires. So again, the arrangement is permanent now. It's all been glued into the, OA, or into the Sahara foam. So now it's permanent, but you can still accessorize. So by adding ornaments, by adding ribbons, there's a lot of different options. You can wire in some smaller ornaments into the arrangement up at the top too, hanging off the birch branches. So there's a lot of different ideas and Shinoda has everything and anything you can imagine to add to this arrangement. So thanks for watching. I'm here at Shinoda Design Center where you should be shopping for every holiday. Uh, come and check us out. And again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.